Hello friends, welcome to my channel. You are watching Electronic Stuff. Today in this video, we are going to understand about intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. These are two forms of semiconductors, which are classified by adding of impurities. So friends, now let's see what is an intrinsic semiconductor. It is nothing but, it is a pure form of semiconductors, without having any impurities. Common examples for these intrinsic semiconductors are, silicon and germanium. Now let's see what is meant by pure form of semiconductors. It means when there is no other atom present in a particular lattice, either it is silicon or germanium lattice, then we can say that it is in pure form. As you can see here, in this silicon lattice, there is no other atom present in this silicon lattice, except these silicons. So, formation of this type of lattices is called pure form of semiconductors or intrinsic semiconductors. And as we know that, there are four electrons in outer shell of a silicon atom. And the silicon atom needs another four electrons to get stable. Now let's see how this silicon atom gets another four electrons and becomes stable. As it shares its electrons with neighboring silicon atoms. As you can see here, this silicon atom is sharing its electrons with this, this and this neighboring silicon atoms and becoming stable. And the bond formed by sharing of electrons is called covalent bond. However, these covalent bonds are very strong and electron fails to leave these bonds. So, at absolute temperature, at T is equal to 0 Kelvin, there will be no free electrons flowing in this crystal lattice. All the electrons are involved in bond sharing. So, if there is no free electrons flowing in this crystal lattice, it means there will be no flow of current. So, if we want to increase the conductivity of this crystal lattice, then we have to increase its temperature or we have to provide it some external heat. So, when some external heat is provided, these electrons gain sufficient kinetic energy and leaves its position by creating a hole. Like in simple words, if we increase the temperature, then the number of free electrons available will also increase. And if the number of free electrons available increases, then the conductivity also increases. And since here we know that electrons are negatively charged and holes are positively charged. And we also know that like charges repel and unlike charges attract each other. Since holes are positively charged and attracted towards negative terminal of the battery. And here electrons are negatively charged and attracted towards positive terminal of the battery. And inside the semiconductor, the net current is due to movement of holes and electrons. So here the electrons are moving in this direction. So the flow of current will be opposite to the flow of electrons. So the direction of current here is in this direction. And here the noteworthy point is that the flow of current is due to only flow of electrons. And the holes does not come outside the semiconductor material. And the other point is the temperature quotient of silicon and germanium. These both have negative temperature quotient. As we already know that in case of negative temperature quotient if we increase the temperature, then the resistance of material will decrease. This is in the case of semiconductors. So if it is in the case of conductors, that is metals, the temperature quotient is positive. So as we know that in case of tem positive temperature quotient, if we increase the temperature, resistance of material will also increase. Now let's discuss about extrinsic semiconductors. These are another form of semiconductors. When we add some impurities to this pure intrinsic semiconducting material, then they will be converted into extrinsic semiconductors. Now here a question arises that, why do we add these impurities? This is because the conductivity of these intrinsic semiconductors at room temperature is poor. Therefore, to make it more conductive, small amount of impurities are added to this intrinsic semiconductor device. And the process of adding impurities to these intrinsic semiconductor devices is known as doping. And basing on these impurities, extrinsic semiconductors are classified into two types, n-type and p-type semiconductors. Here in n-type semiconductors, 
pentavalent impurities are added. Examples for these pentavalent impurities are phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, etc. And in case of p-type semiconductors, trivalent impurities are added. And examples for these trivalent impurities are boron, aluminium, gallium, etc. Now let's see about n-type semiconducting material. Now here in a pure silicon crystal, if pentavalent impurities are added, then it is classified as n-type semiconducting material. Now let's take example of phosphorus atom. And we know that this phosphorus atom consists 5 valence electrons in its outer shell. Now if we dope this phosphorus atom in pure silicon crystal, then the 4 valence electrons of phosphorus atom will involve in bond sharing. And this fifth valence electron will remain free. And this electron here is loosely bounded by the phosphorus atom. So we can say that for every phosphorus atom we added in this pure silicon crystal lattice, there will be one extra electron present in case of n-type semiconductors. So this is the reason why electrons are majority charge carriers and holes are minority charge carriers in n-type semiconducting devices. So these free electrons that are loosely bounded by every phosphorus atom that we added in pure silicon crystal is responsible for increasing in conductivity of n-type semiconducting material. So here you can see that this phosphorus atom has donated one electron. So it became positively charged ion and we represent this with positive ion and one loosely bounded electron above it. So consider this as n-type semiconducting material. And the phosphorus atom is denoted like this in n-type semiconducting material. And this positive charged ion is also called as donor ion as it is donating one electron in n-type semiconducting material. Now let's discuss about p-type semiconductors. Now here if trivalent impurities are added to pure silicon crystal then it is classified as p-type semiconducting materials. Now if we take here example of boron then we know that it consists of three valence electrons in its outer shell. And if we dope this boron atom to pure silicon crystal then the three valence electrons of boron atom will involve in bond sharing. But the fourth neighboring silicon atom cannot involve in bond sharing with boron because the boron atom consists of only three valence electrons in its outer shell. So we can say that for every boron atom we added then there will be a formation of one hole in p-type semiconducting materials. So this is the reason why holes are majority charge carriers and electrons are minority charge carriers in p-type semiconducting materials. Since here we can say that this boron atom needs to gain one electron. So it is represented as negative ion and a vacancy of electron which is also called as hole above it. And this negative ion is also called as acceptor ion because it needs to gain one electron. So this is all about intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching.